here is singer-songwriter, broadcaster, audio-video artist, entertainment agent and your host. It's the master storyteller himself, James Kevin O'Connor. Hey, 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 it's a beautiful day. Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. Oh, I've got a good one for you guys today. Um, This lady is amazing. She's the CEO of Unity in Service Incorporated. She's a retired corrections lieutenant with 29 years in law enforcement and a 12-year veteran, a U.S. Army, and a graduate of St. Thomas University. She is a visibility strategist. What? A visibility strategist? I never heard of such a thing. First time for me a 2x winning international public speaker, international best-selling author, a business coach and virtual event coordinator. Dr. Patricia Rogers' Zone of Genius sets a platform for entrepreneurs to speak out and sell, make connections, and increase their bottom line. And if you hang in there, I've got a free chapter of her upcoming book for you. It'll be in the show notes. So let's hang out today with Dr. Patricia Rogers, otherwise known as Dr. Pat. Well, I am really delighted to be talking with Dr. Patricia Rogers, Dr. Pat, we call it, right? And uh, yeah. welcome to podcasting your global career, Dr. Pat. And um, uh, I want to talk about a few things f- with you today. First of all, you are a visibility strategist. I've never heard anybody with that title. Tell us what that is about. It's so cool. Oh, visibility strategist. Yeah. Yes. I developed that name after the pandemic. I shifted us to online before I was the I call myself a business development strategist, but I always uh, hosted events. So, and I did some coaching, things of that nature. So I sort of did several things. So I just business development strategist, basically and coming out of corporate America. You know, I kind of know what it is to have to discover your gifts and talents and turn them into a business monetize. So I was on that path. And when the pandemic hit and I was already hosting live conferences, and I do a lot of social media. So people would see the graphic designs and all of those things and the people in the event, just see it unfold in front of them and we start flying in. And then I did, I eventually went global and I hosted an event when I was living in Miami, I hosted my first event in Atlanta. So people flew in. So that's what I was doing. And uh, initially I started my events. I was just hosting them at first in my backyard. And I was only doing legal shield at that time. And I would have the entrepreneurs over to do a 60 second infomercial. And I knew that was my way of getting them in front of me. So I could do my 60 second infomercial about legal shield. And I paid for the DJ. I paid for the food. I rented rented the table and chairs for the vendors and then the tables and all that. And, and when I just came, came upon my retirement in 2015, I retired in 2016. I started following people like Bill Walsh, Nancy Matthews, Women's Prosperity Network, Trish Carr, all of those. And then, of course, I went to to a lot of Les Brown's events and things of that nature. I started needed to go out and see what the entrepreneurs was doing. And then I would go to a lot of networking events before work. After I think it was after work uh, networking. It was a organization that goes all over the place. And so I did a lot of networking. I had to go discover and see what they were doing. And that's what I did. And then I eventually started investing in Bill Walsh uh, programs, speaking platinum programs, Nancy Matthews, Trish Carr with Women's Prosperity Network, Sharon Lecter. So some of those people were my mentors, still are my mentors. And um, that's how I got started. And then they told me, you're hosting events in your backyard. All you got to do now is monetize. And that's what took me into my first hotel in 2014. Congratulations. So you made this, <laughs> you made the shift from uh, corporate America to being an entrepreneur and going it all on your own. Um, how did that feel like finally getting the ball rolling and you went from, you know, the daring, like going ahead and saying, I'm just going to do this 
to you know finally turning it into a business uh that must have been so gratifying yes it is when you have the right people leading and guiding you and i was you know and i just i'm a, I'm a woman of faith i have a lot of faith in god i have a lot of faith in myself because of the challenges that i have encountered in my life that i've over i overcame so i know there's nothing in it that shows up for me that's not meant to be there so i just face it head on and get through it and i because i know it's going to be so rewarding like you just said on the other side so yeah i'm like everybody else i had fear uh hosting those events but i knew that <clears throat> i had to do it because if i didn't do it it wouldn't get done so i hosted my events and of course like you said what turned me into visibility was when COVID hit <clears throat> And I had to shift gears like everybody else. I had to learn now, how do I host these events online? And that was where the coaches come into play. They encourage us that don't, whatever you do, don't lose sight of your vision. All you have to do is pivot. So training is essential. After being in corporate America, working 29 years in law enforcement, a lot of training to get that job done, to be to excel in that job, even as I did as I retired as a correction lieutenant. I also did 12 years in the military. So, so training is essential. That's that's embedded in me. So I know that in order for me to know how to host online events, I had to get the proper training from those who had what I wanted, who've already done 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 it or was in the process of transitioning to, or I had to also, you know, just try, just take get the tools necessary, event right, you know, uh Zoom, study the platforms, bring them together so that they would run smoothly and get my graphic designer because I'm very meticulous about how I show up. So that's how I became the visibility strategy. Say when I show up, people see color. They see, you know, they see, you know, uniformity. And, yeah, and, and the somebody right, told the, me, say, you need to be a visibility strategist. Yeah. And a lady gave me that name. She recommended that for me. And I, I, she said, because since I transitioned online, she said, you show up so well and you, and you hold us accountable because everybody in my events are asked to use the virtual backgrounds that we send the attendees one, all, you know, for all of them to use. And all of our speakers, participants, expert panelists, we provide them a customized, just like you see behind me here with their name and their. So I am, that's how I am or have become the visibility strategies. I love it. It's great. I want to I wanna just circle back <laughs> to something uh, really important you said. You said you're a woman of faith and you take things head on and meet them as they come to you. So I just want to share this little quote that's on my desk that I just wrote yesterday. Submit to God and be at peace with him. In this way, prosperity will come to you. And that's from Job 20, uh, 22, 21. And I thought that was so fitting to just, as you were saying that, I said, isn't this something I, that I have this on my desk that I just wrote wow. yesterday? And, and it's so true, uh, you know, when you embrace the Lord and just, and just roll with the peace that he offers you, good things happen. So um, I want to also uh, thank you for your service to this country and also to law enforcement. So um, tell us about, like, which service were you in and uh, what kind of, what part of law enforcement were you involved with? I did 12 years in the U.S. Army Reserve leaving home, you know, after uh, finishing high school and moving, you know, I applied for the military. So that took me away from home, of course, because I wanted to see the world, if you will. Yeah. And uh, I knew that I, I wanted to uh, get a trade or something, learn something. And I wanted to take nursing. And so that's why I went into the military. Uh, I chose that because I knew that they would give me food. <laughs> <laughs> I knew they would give me clothes and I knew I was going to get paid. Yeah, nice. <laughs> Unlike going to college, right? <laughs> right. It's a good foundation, right? I get to yeah, eat. A you little know? bit of college, but that wasn't working for me. I said, uh, uh, got to be an easier way because I didn't have those parents that could, that could just give me money. Yeah. You know? yeah. So I took the, took the best route for me. Wow. And, and, I, so, and so that led you into law enforcement. So what, tell us a little bit about that. Corrections, law enforcement, right? yes. I did the reserves. Is where you just go away for one weekend of, of a month. You you go away for two weeks of the year, right. and you go, and you serve one weekend a month in your hometown. So that allowed me to. So it was. I said that because I was overlapping. I was still in the reserve, but I was working for Dade County uh, Corrections. So right. I started working for Corrections, and then um, and I was already in the military reserve. So that was uh, my career 
And I went into that job not even knowing it was a career because I was young. I didn't know, younger. Yeah, right. And uh, eventually I realized it, it was I had something in my hand. And um, so I eventually, after a few years, I started taking the promotional exams um, yeah. that would elevate me to the next level, you know, more increase in all of that. And then that's what I did. I took, uh, each time I took the exam, there's a lot of politics. And I, I'm an outspoken person. I'm sure you know that. And yes. when you're working in a predominantly male environment, um, sometimes less said to some people is better. But yeah. when you're violating my rights, I go by what's in the book because I read them. And if you violate it, I don't care who you are. I'm going to stand up for what's rightly, rightfully mine. So I was passed over for three promotions, corporal, sergeant, and lieutenant. And I eventually persevered through all of the challenges, followed the rules. And of course, I succeeded in every situation. Wow. And yeah. And so eventually I did retire, of course. That was my goal to retire as a corrections lieutenant. And I retired in 2016 as a corrections lieutenant. And of course, Dade County pays me a six figure salary uh, for the rest of my life. Plus, I get a 3% increase. And I say that because I want people to understand that there's challenges. You cannot have success without having sacrifice something. Yeah, right. And a lot of times, you know, it's just, it's just part of it. It's just part of the process. And when you read that scripture, I almost threw my hands up and said, amen. Because you know what is so true when we trust God in the midst of the challenges, we won't be we won't be waver. We won't waver and we won't be shaken. We'll just keep moving. And this is what I inspire people to do as a public speaker. And the reason I host those events, because I want all of us to know that we all have to kind of keep each other inspired and push. And I want to be that example for the people who are sitting on the sidelines wanting to do but afraid to move. I want to show them that, baby, if you don't do what I'm doing, ain't nothing going to happen. You got to right. keep moving. No matter what it looks like, you got to keep going. No matter how you feel, you got to keep going. You know why? Because your goals don't care about how you feel. Yeah. Your goals are waiting for us to achieve them. Right. You know, uh, I want to I wanna add something about um, Department of Corrections. Now, I have a dear friend who has spent his entire career at Rikers Island, and uh, he, you know, he shared with me, I didn't... As, as he and I, he's a fellow chaplain, we got closer and closer and started talking about, you know, our respective uh, choices in life and so forth. You know, he shared with me, he said, you know, people don't realize that I have been a prisoner for 50 years. <laughs> and it's like, you know, I never looked at it that way, but it's it's so true. Even though you, you get to go home at night, you're still in there with very, very volatile and challenging situations and often life-threatening, and it's just not the easiest job, as you know, Dr. Pat, um, what I'm talking about. And people don't realize that, and it's, it's become sort of my mission to share that with everybody I have the opportunity to, to say, you know, our, our correction officers uh, really, really have a tough, tough job to do. Um, and, you know, I really commend you and thank you for the service uh, that you provided. Um, I also want to just go in and I want to congratulate you on the book that you're working on, In Person oh. and Virtual Events That Rock. I love the title. Oh, wow. So when Thank can, you. When can we expect this to come out? We're hoping to uh, have it published by July. July is my birthday, July 5th. So I'm hoping sometime in the July month of July. Oh, so you're be, a cancer. So no wonder, we, no wonder we get yeah. along so well. We're both fellow cancers. <laughs> oh wow awesome june 29th for me so there we go yeah <laughs> well, awesome that's great so um so the book is coming out and i loved what you said about inspiring people uh it's kind of what's in my heart too is to encourage people to really go after their dreams because we might be gone tomorrow and we don't want to go in front of the lord and have him say, I gave you all this opportunity, and what did you do? You sat there and you, you did nothing, you know? So uh, really, uh, thank you for that. And tell me about your best, um, you've coached people. So what is your best scenario of all the things you do? You've coached people, you help people along. Is it being in front of uh, crowds? Is that when your genius really shines? <sighs> That's a good question. Ooh, nobody ever asked me that. Being in front of a crowd is that when? Yes, I would say so. Yeah. 
I would say so because I am a people person. Yeah. And that's how I discovered my gifts and talents because you know and I know, James, that the gifts are already in us. We have to get around the right resources to pull it put it out of us and let people we have to listen to what other people say so that we can recognize them. So after our people was like certain things that tell me they like about me, oh you so outspoken, oh you have so much confidence, oh you whatever. That's stuff I took lightly. You know, but I realized that I sat down and really tried to discover my gifts and talents after reading Napoleon Hill in Thinking for Rich. You know, he says one sound idea is all one needs to achieve success. And then it started at making sense while all the coaches was telling me about producing products and services and using my own intellectual properties and monetizing. So I had to, I came out of corporate. Everything was free. You know, so I had to learn all of that stuff. And of course, that by that by me doing so, it, it allowed me to learn what my gifts and my talents were. And the problem at the bottom of the, you know, a, 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 the bottom line is just that everything I did when I looked over my life had to do with me bringing people together. Whether it was at my home in the backyard, cookouts, which I shared a little bit about. Whether it was at church when we had to invite choirs in so we could raise money for the church. Whether it was at work when they had palm rays of diabetes and different things, they always, the captains, even after they beat me down, they always called me to do these break, these, uh, what we call, uh, you know, uh, the get get togethers at work, you know, right. potlucks and things of that nature. Yeah. So I do have that knack. I do have that knack for bringing people together. And my purpose for doing that is because I want to see them happy for just that moment that God has put them in my presence. Yeah. Um, as we're wrapping up here, give us the best way. I want to ask you two things. The best way to connect f- with you, and then also I'd like you to share um, just a little bit of hope out there. What would you say to somebody who's like they're sort of on the fence about doing something like you're doing, like getting up in front of people or just taking that next step in their career, and they just can't find the uh, faith or the courage to do it, so uh, what would you say to them? Yeah. What would I say to them? I could say a whole lot to them, but I'm going to tell you what I'm going to say to them right now. If they listen, follow me as I follow Christ. And I'll take you where I'm going. If you just follow me, so many more doors of opportunity is going to open up that you can't see. You're not going to see it. It's not yours to see. And I'm sure we've heard people say it's not ours to worry about the how. But if you have faith in God, exercise your faith. Get up, suit up, and show up. That means follow those who have what you want. And I'm sure that just like myself, I was I had to get started. And the best thing I can tell anybody to do is just do it. Take the leap and trust the process. Amen. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. All right. I love it. You know, we'll put all of your links in the show notes. I'm excited about your book. Um, I love the fact that you you live, think, and grow rich by Napoleon and Hill. It's it's like right over there on my couch. I never leave it. It's oh, like, wow. I, yeah, I love that book. I, oh I, my op- God. I open yes. it every day, every day. There's, there's some yes. gem that comes out of that, you know. Um, and for people who don't know about that book, it's it's more than it sounds like. It's not really think and grow rich is is you could use that as a metaphor, but it's way way deeper than the title. Um, but it is. Do, it do, is. Do, yeah, Doctor Pat, I want to thank you so much for being a part of podcasting your global career. Thanks for being here and in parting, I just want to wish all of God's blessings on you, your new book and being the queen visibility strategist of all time. Awesome. And there's your free gift for the listeners if they want to get a free chapter of our book, chapter one. I know you guys had a good time today hanging out with me. And please check out the show notes and support the artists that we put on this channel for your enjoyment. Hey, if you need coaching, I'm your man. Go to the links in the show notes, calendly.com forward slash dharmic, and you can take a ride with me and we'll see if we're a good fit together. That's a wrap for me today. I'm your host for podcasting your global career. So until the next time when we meet again, I'll either see you on the socials or I'll see you from the stage. Ride on, ride on, baby, won't you?
Won't you take a ride with me? Ride on, ride on, we can untangle all the mystery. If wishes were windows, I'd open one and find that freedom is really a simple state of mind. So ride on, ride on, baby, won't you take a ride with me? Ride on, ride on, we can untangle all the mystery. Find the key Right on, right on We can unlock each other's destiny I taste the breeze of freedom It's tingling on my tongue You're the 